My name is Margot Crump. My exhibition is entitled The Lure. The works in the lore explore power through our interpretations of gender and nature. Lately, I've been looking at hunting and courting as a way to trace the complex movements of power between bodies. The body is something that deeply interests me. Um, it's throughout this whole exhibition. I am really curious about how we define body, how we decide who gets a body. It's very anthropocentric. It's often politicized. And what I'm hoping to do here is expand the notion of body. Hunting and recording are activities that are both kind of human animal and animal animal that I kind of latched onto without meaning to really. And it became sort of a way to grapple with the behavior of others, the behavior of myself, sort of moments where, you know, you've been sort of chasing another person and that chase can start to feel um, at times maybe menacing, a little violent, also very exciting, very sexy. Um, I was writing earlier this morning about a work in the exhibition that's called Anticipation Fantasies After Fragonard. And the reason that I'm bringing that work up is that it features a um, kind of a cropped in part of Fragonard's The Swing painting, which is also called Happy Accidents of the Swing. And there's something very sort of like saccharine and sweet about that painting to contemporary eyes. But when you think about this young woman that's on the swing, she seems very helpless, um, way more objectified than our normal gaze of like a woman posed in a painting would be. This is an intentional act. Like this is her hunting. She's just as much hunting the man beneath the swing as the man is hunting for her in this kind of like courtly love affair. And so by positioning herself in this way, the swing moment becomes this kind of very active and powerful display of herself as both bait and hunter. And so I think that's a great kind of anecdote for how I think about hunting and courting as um, kind of a unified and overlapping, but also very different set of activities. When I make a work, it either starts with language, like a turn of phrase, or something I've read, um, or something I say frequently. Oftentimes, like idiomatic expressions that have to do with sex are really things that like grasp my interest, and then I'll see an image, or it's something that I've touched that I've felt, um, like silicone. Sex safe silicone is in this exhibition a lot, and when you touch it and you feel it, it feels just like a body, but it's incredibly artificial. It's something we've created. It's actually used. Um, in the medical industry as well as the sex industry to kind of recreate like a flesh-like feeling. A few years ago, I created these kind of loving characters that I call Dicklets. They are sex-safe silicone sculptures that kind of range from something about this big to something about this big. They are cast from fruit and vegetables but they resemble phalluses, teats, clits, um, just any sort of kind of like bodily form, but they're actually um, totally plant. They, there's nothing I do to them other than cast them directly from a plant and then apply um, pigments, which actually make up based pigments. The dicklets for a while were just these static objects, and then I really wanted to kind of put them in their own Know, ecosystem, for lack of a better word. So I created a series of works called Stilled Chimeras, which are based on the Dutch Golden Age floral still lives in terms of lighting and overall kind of composition. This allowed me to create a space where the diglets could interact with other plants and animals, especially flowers. And they kind of move through those um, assemblages of things at once being very obvious as to their nature, but also kind of blending in and stepping back and allowing the other um, forms to move to the front. It's interesting because we don't tend to think of flowers as being genitalia, but they are. And the diglets are much more obvious in that sense, even though they also are not genitalia. 
So there's a lot of like playing back and forth with what something is and what something isn't and how we see it and how we name it and want it to be in the world. I think that a lot of the content, like the, the back ideas, the idea of body, the idea of genitalia, the idea of sex, pleasure, desire, pain, those are all things that we don't always talk about in um, what some people call polite companies, so bringing those to the forefront, spending a lot of my life thinking about those things, there's definitely a subversive quality to that. Um, the way I sort of think about the works operating is that they are kind of like lures. They are very seductive in terms of their material and visual appearances. They shimmer, they glisten, they, um, they pull you in. And then once you're there, the things that felt familiar are suddenly quite unfamiliar and things have come together in ways that are a little unsettling and often uncomfortable. By playing with ways in which I can reveal our value structures, because most of the time we don't realize what we value. We don't realize how we've organized power. It's, there are things that we take as givens that we don't think about because they're just kind of like an innate reaction to something. That's, that's kind of what I'm, that's something I'm very interested in doing. And like that moment where you've felt maybe offended or, um, grossed out, like that kind of highlights a value that you might have. So kind of casing something in beauty or casing something in the, like a traditional flower arrangement, it provides that kind of access point to revealing your internal biases and your internal structures of value. One of the ways that I've explored kind of expanding this idea of body in the lore is to use mineral minerals that fluoresce. So fluorescence is a behavior of minerals where certain minerals, where if they are exposed to ultraviolet um, wavelengths of light, in particular I'm using long wave light, they absorb most of the light, but then their internal electrons become excited and they will flash out light once they're done absorbing it. So I was reading about this um, in conjunction with um, some of Deleuze's philosophy about um, non-human expression. And I was thinking about this word excite. And in English, excited has definitely kind of a sexual connotation. So I started thinking about creating kind of like a sexual history of, of rock. So when you interact with the piece, you are given um, a flashlight, and the flashlight becomes kind of a vehicle for the viewer's gaze. And as the flashlight moves along the bodies of the rocks, they become excited. So in one sense, you it feels a bit like, like a science museum, natural history display, but in another sense, it's a very um, objectifying experience where you're, the rocks are on display and you're looking at their bodies and their bodies know that you're looking at them and they're excited by your looking and then they have like a subsequent release from the excitement, the release of the light. So the light kind of becomes sort of like a rock orgasm, which is um, kind of a playful, fun way to look at a different kind of being and a different kind of body in the world. Display, the act of displaying, putting bodies on display, putting work on display, um, that's something that really is like a deep undercurrent in the work and in my practice. I think about how something I make will be shown as I'm making it. It's never an afterthought. It's very, very important to the process and to the meaning of the work. Um, and that's a reflection of how we all kind of interact with each other in the world. Like we're constantly putting ourselves on display, whether it's to attract a mate, or to um, make people think a certain way about us. There's a piece called Preserving My Desire, which is I've um, handmade lingerie and encrusted it in salt. So it's a way to kind of preserve 
and this moment of like what I was doing when I might have worn it. And it kind of, in a sense, becomes like a little black book, a collection of moments, a collection of intimacies that I'm publicly putting on display in a space. And it becomes kind of like a, a conquest in a sense. And I think we do put our conquests on display at times. So display is something that I'm using both as a visual tactic and as a conceptual idea that kind of acts as the uh, framework for the whole exhibition. When I'm making work, I'm thinking about how I can expand our experience in the world, how I can expand how we move through the world. So if someone is here viewing the work, what I would like to imagine might happen is that through the experience of being in the space, of noticing very small things, of maybe being a little uncomfortable, maybe feeling um, like some kind of way, a little excited even, like um, there are things that kind of toy with you and change your perception, I hope, that there are moments where something that you thought was one way is actually another way. And I would like to see that maybe those kind of moments are then reflected out and expanded into your broader way of being in your everyday life where you kind of ask questions more. <laughs>